going to start with uh, Hadi. Yeah, he's going to tell us about fair allocation and invisible goods, improvements, and generalizations. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, my talk is about fair allocation of individual goods. OK. Um, my talk is about fair allocation of individual goods, improvements, and generalizations. Uh, it's a joint work with Muhammad Qutsi, Muhammad Haji Aghai, Masud Sadiqin, and Said Sadiqin. Generally, in the fair allocation problem of individual goods, we have some agents and we have some items, and we want to allocate these items to the agents. And each item has a value for each uh, agent, and this, uh, value, that this, va this valuation functions may differ. And here, our goal is to fairly allocate the items among the agents. Uh, there are lots of fairness criteria in the literature, but maybe two of the f most famous ones are proportionality and envy freeness. By proportionality, we mean uh, in the allocation, each agent will receive at least one over n fraction of uh, the value of uh, all the items. Unfortunately, in the indivisible setting, it's not possible to have any proportional allocation. There's a simple counterexample. If we have two items and one agent, if we have two agents and one item, uh, clearly we should allocate this item to one of these agents, and clearly it's not proportional. The other important uh, fra fairness criterion is envy freeness. Uh, Envy freeness is stronger than proportionality, and in envy freeness, we say each agent prefers his allocation uh, more than any other uh, agent's allocation. But here we are going to work, since we cannot guarantee proportionality and envy freeness uh, for indivisible goods, uh, we are using another notion that we call it, that is called as uh, the max measure. It's the generalization of the famous cut and choose protocol. It's a very old protocol for two agents. Assume that we have two agents and some items. And we ask the first agent to partition all the items into, bond, into two bundles. And then we ask the second agent to come and pick the uh, bundle that he prefers more. And then we allocate the remaining bundle to the first agent. Clearly, clearly here, if we want to, if the first agent wants to maximize the uh, minimum guarantee that he can get, he will uh, maximize the minimum bundle, the value of the minimum bundle. In, uh, in 2011, Eric Budish generalized this protocol for more than two agents, for n agents, actually. And he defined maximum share of agent i as uh, like this. Uh, we ask agent i, similarly to the Cut and choose protocol, we ask, the, uh, we ask agent I to partition all the items into n, uh, into n bundles. And uh, we ask him to do that in order to maximize the minimum uh, bundle, the value of the ma uh, to maximize the value of the minimum bundle. For example, here, I assume that we have five items and three agents, and we have their valuations. And the back numbers are their valuations. And for instance, for the red agent, if we have this allocation, if we have this partitioning, actually, uh, the first partition has value 8 for him. The second partition has value 7. And the third, value, the third bundle has value 7 for him as well. So the minimum bundle here has value 7. So the maximum share of this agent is 7 here. And we cannot actually find a better uh, partitioning. Uh, similar, to, similar to this, we find the maximum share of the green agent and blue agent as well. Uh, more precisely, if we want to define the maximum share, uh, we define it for each agent. We actually maximize the, uh, we, find that we find an n partitioning such that it maximizes the minimum allocation based on the valuation of agent i. Everything is good with this definition? Cool. Uh, let me come back to our example. Our question is, can we always uh, guarantee we are someone who wants to allocate all the items to these agents, and we want to 
guarantee the maximum share for all the agents. Can we, uh, the question is, can we always uh, guarantee the maximum share for all the agents? In the, uh, in the example that we studied, the, uh, the answer is yes. If we have this allocation, it guarantees the maximum share for all the agents. But uh, and actually, when we have two agents, the answer is yes. We always can uh, guarantee the maximum share using a cut and choose protocol. And then, but unfortunately, when we have uh, more than two agents, when we have three agents, the answer is no. Prokachia and Wang in 2014 gave a surprising counterexample for the problem. Uh, and right now, the question is, can we give uh, Right now, we cannot guarantee one MMS for all the agents. The question is, can we give any other guarantee? For instance, 1 over 2, 2 over 3, 3 over 4, something like that. The answer is yes. Uh, hopefully, the solution for 1 over 2 approximation guarantee is almost easy. Uh, it's based on two steps. The first step is reducibility. Based on this idea, if we have an item such that its value be more than half of MMS of, such, MMS of uh, an agent, we allocate that item to this agent. Okay? Uh, and we can say that this item actually uh, satisfy this agent. And uh, we do this actually, and we can then go and solve the sub problem uh, based on an induction. And then when, we, uh, when the problem is uh, 1 over 2 irreducible, and we cannot reduce more. Uh, we use the famous moving knife idea. We put all the items in a line, and we have a knife, and we start from the left side of the line. And if we, uh, actually the uh, value of the, all the items, and we, move the, we start moving the knife, and if uh, the value of all the items uh, on the left side of the knife be actually at least one over two of MS of an agent, we allocate all the items on the left side of the knife to that agent. And we can actually prove that this allocation guarantees one over two MMS for all the agents. Uh, although the uh, problem was so easy for one over two approximation, it's much harder for uh, better guarantees. Prokachi and Wang in 2014 gave the uh, first two, uh, two over three approximation guarantee for the problem, but unfortunately it was not polynomial time, it was existential. Uh, later in 2015, Amanitis, Kalaitis, Nixon, and Salberry gave the first polynomial time approximation guarantee for the problem for two over three MMS, two over three MMS. And later in 2017, Barman and Krishnamurti gave another polynomial time approximation guarantee, two, two, two over three approximation guarantee for the problem. And they also generalize the problem. I will talk about it later. Okay, and in this paper, our main result is that we improve the result from two over three to three over four for the additive valuation functions. And right now, I just want to give some intuitions about our algorithm. The first idea that we use is the reducibility. Uh, as I mentioned before, for the reducibility, for each agent, actually I, and the set of items S, if the value of the bundle for agent I be at least alpha times MS of I, here we can say that if we allocate all the items in S to agent I, we, ha uh, we have satisfied agent I. Okay, we do that. but. Actually, we should have uh, one more condition to do that. That condition is for the other agents. For the, all the other agents, we should uh, be careful that if we allocate these items in S to agent I, the MMS of the remaining uh, items for the remaining agents is at least as good as the previous MMS. If we have this condition, we can use a simple induction and uh, try to solve the sub-problem. And the sub-problem is uh, that our problem is alpha irreducible and we cannot reduce more. The second idea that we are using is a matching idea. 
In the matching ID, actually, uh, we deal with the uh, high value items. With the items, uh, we actually call them heavy items. And more precisely, we find the subset T from the agents and subset S of items, and we find a matching from M from uh, a matching from S to T that we call it M. But this matching, this matching is not a simple matching. It, it should have some properties. The first property is that the, uh, the allocated items uh, actually have high value for the agents. Uh, I mean, every item that we have assigned to an agent, for instance, I, has value at least uh, some beta MMS for that agent. And the second property that we have here is that the agents uh, who uh, actually do not receive anything from this matching uh, do not like these uh, allocated items that much. Uh, so they are not high value items for them. Okay? So first we try to uh, allocate the high value items to the agents. And later we will see that we can uh, allocate the low value items to the remaining agents. The third idea that we are using is based on cycle MV freeness. Just for a fast recall, uh, MV freeness was uh, defined like this. Every agent prefers his own allocation to any other agent's allocation. Okay? Here we use the idea of cycle MV freeness. Cycle MV freeness is weaker than the MV freeness. And in cycle MV freeness, we say that there is no cycle of agents such that each agent prefers the next agent's allocation. Uh, and actually, in the matching that we had before, in the, all the matchings that we use in our protocols, uh, we make sure that uh, the matchings are cycle MV free. And the fourth idea that we are using in our alloc in our port yeah. oh, okay. uh, in our protocol is the backfilling idea. And the backfilling idea is spiritually similar to the. Uh, it's similar to the knife, moving knife algorithm that I talked, it, talked about it before. And uh, that's the last step of our algorithm. And we are going to allocate the low, I, low value items uh, for the remaining agents, actually, using the backfilling idea. Uh, we actually decide the problem for more general problems, as, for more general valuations as well, for submodule valuations, fractionalized subadditive valuations, and subadditive valuations. Uh, actually, sub IIT valuations are more general than XOS, and XOS are, is more general than submodular, and submodular is more general than additive valuations. Our ideas for additive al uh, allocation is completely different than uh, completely different than the submodular uh, allocation, but uh, the ideas behind the submodular allocation and the XOS allocation uh, are very close. Uh, okay, let's see the summary of the results that we have. For the additive case, actually, as I mentioned, uh, previous work was 2 over 3 MMS. We improved it to 3 over 4. Uh, and actually, for a uh, submodular case, uh, Barman and Krishnamurti studied the problem, and they gave the first constant approximation algorithm for that, and they gave uh, 1 over 10 existential proof and 1 over 31 polynomial type algorithm. And we improved their result to 1 over 3, and we also provide a uh, counterexample uh, 3 over 4 MMS for submodular case. And it's interesting because uh, the counterexample for the additive setting is 1 minus epsilon for a very small epsilon right now, actually. And for XOS and subadditive settings, there, uh, we, didn't, we didn't have any previous work, but we actually considered it. And we gave constant results for XOS and uh, order of 1 over log M approximation for subadditive. OK. Uh, right now, I just want to say some, some main ideas uh, of our submodular, uh, about our allocation in the submodular setting. Uh, as I mentioned, we give we guarantee one over three MMS for the submodular valuations, and 
First, without loss of generality, we consider that MMS of each agent is equal to one, and we also assume that the problem is one over three irreducible, because if it wasn't irreducible, we reduce it. And we define a, a ceiling function that we, uh, that actually for, uh, that actually considers that uh, for, for a bundle S, actually, if we have FF, uh, uh, as for instance, as a valuation function, fx of s is the minimum of x and uh, f of s. Actually, we are considering a ceiling for the valuation function. And we actually define uh, truncated social welfare. Is, uh, actually, is, uh, we are using the ceiling function for the social welfare of the allocation. And the uh, x for the ceiling function is uh, equal to 2 over 3 here. Our claim is that uh, an allocation that maximizes the truncated social welfare guarantees 1 over 3 MMS. And the reason is that if we have such an allocation, if, uh, and if we had an agent such that uh, he didn't uh, receive at least 1 over 3 of his MMS, we actually could find some item and allocate this item to this agent and we could see that uh, we can actually uh, uh, improve the truncated social welfare uh, using this uh, switch, actually. And our algorithm idea is uh, easy. We start with an arbitrary allocation, and iteratively, iteratively we uh, try to increase the truncated social welfare. Thank you.